What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next concept, dealing with factoring. We're now gonna talk about perfect square trinomials. So this is a specific case of factoring, very similar to the difference of squares. And actually with this kind of trinomial, you can actually factor it with decomposition. So this video isn't even fully necessary, but the thing is lots of teachers, lots of textbooks have this as a subcase. So I did want to touch on it, but you already have enough tools to factor a perfect square trinomial. And I'm gonna show you that you do. And similar to the difference of squares, at the end of this video, I'm also going to introduce a formula that your teacher and textbook may or may not bring up, but in case they do, just so you're more comfortable using it, I'll go through it as well. So basically a perfect square trinomial, it's going to factor into two identical factors. So let me give you an example. So an example would be x squared plus 8x plus 16. This just looks like a standard quadratic, but if we were to factor it with decomposition, so the a value is one, the b value is eight, the c value is 16, so the AC value is one times 16, which is 16. So what two numbers multiply to 16 and then add up to eight? And here's what happens with a perfect square trinomial. These two numbers that you're gonna get over here, they're always gonna be the same. So in this case, it's a four. Four times four is 16. Four plus four is equal to eight. So then this middle term decomposes into those two terms. And then when you factor by grouping, from these two you could take out an x, so you're left with x plus four. From these two you could take out a four, so you're left with x plus four. And then notice that the bracket, as expected, is the same, so we could take out that binomial common factor, and we're left with x plus four. So notice two identical factors. And the way it's usually written is, since these are identical, x plus four times x plus four is just x plus four squared, like that. Okay, so if you get something in this kind of format, factors into that kind of format, that was a perfect square trinomial. Let's do another example. So another example would be like, let's say 4x squared uh, minus 12x plus nine, like that. Now we're gonna be going over a bunch of different cases in the next couple of videos. Sometimes you can get multivariable expressions, you can get uh, other certain cases that you can run into and we'll go over those. For these, or uh, for this overview video, I'm just keeping things a little bit more simple, but we will be going over different cases over the next few videos as a heads up. But same thing here, um, if we factor this by decomposition, a value is four, b value is negative 12, the c value is nine. So what's the ac value? Nine times four, which is 36. So what two numbers multiply to 36 and add up to negative 12? Notice how it's negative six, the same number again, right? Negative six times negative six gives us positive 36, negative six plus negative six gives us negative 12. So then we decompose this middle term like that. Then from these two, you could take out a 2x, so we'd be left with 2x minus 3. And then from these two, we could take out a negative 3, and we'd be left with 2x minus 3 again. Then we could take out a 2x minus 3. And notice what are we left with? 2x minus 3. So Final answer ends up 2x minus 3 squared, like that. Okay, so that's two examples of perfect square trinomials. And again, you can always factor these with decomposition. You already have enough tools up until this point to factor it with, um, with how we've been factoring other trinomials, other quadratics with uh, decomposition. However, there is many times, as I've mentioned, teachers and textbooks sometimes expect you to use certain formulas for this, sort of like the difference of squares. So I am gonna introduce those formulas. And to keep it general, basically, you can have two cases 
for perfect square trinomials, either if there's a positive here or there's a negative. So either that B value in the middle is gonna be positive or it's going to be negative. Those are the two differences. And so in general, you may see a formula like that, A plus B squared or A minus B squared. Okay, and if you were to take this a plus b times a plus b, if you were to expand it, foil it out, and then simplify all the like terms, you'd end up with a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. And then if you took a minus b times a minus b, you would end up with a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. And so many times you may get questions where they want you to verify that something is a perfect square trinomial. And what you would have to do is you'd have to use this side over here. One of these two sides, again, depending on if you are if you have a positive value, like over here, or a negative value. So imagine that this question now was to verify that this is a perfect square trinomial. So instead of actually factoring it, to this using decomposition, which verifies it as well, they may want you to verify it with this formula. And if they do that, what you wanna do is rewrite this in a way where it's going to be in that format for the formula that I just wrote down. And so the way you wanna do this is Personally, what I do is I take the n's first and I write them as the a squared and then the b squared. So if we take this and if we rewrite it as x squared, let's leave the middle for now. And then how can we take the 16 and write it in the format b squared? Well, notice that that is just four squared like that. And so now notice that if we compare this format to this over here, this A is like in brackets, this B is like in brackets, we could tell that the A value is X and the B value is four for this particular trinomial. And now that we have something for the A and the B, notice this is just gonna be two times that A value, which in this case is X, times that B value, which is four. And notice that when we do multiply these, two times x times four, what do we end up with? We end up with eight x over here. So the fact that we were able to take this trinomial and rewrite it in this format over here, right? We rewrote it in that same format, a squared, x squared, two, two, a is x, b is four, and then we got the b value, which is four squared. Because we were able to write in that format, that verifies it right there that it's a perfect square trinomial. And we know from that formula, what is this going to equal? It's going to equal a plus b squared. Well, with this, since we know that the a value is x, the b value is 4, we'll have x plus 4 squared, which is what we got with decomposition. But again, if they require you to use this formula, they want you to take a trinomial like this, rewrite in that format here and then you could go straight to the answer. So this is not my preferred method of doing it. If I was teaching, I probably wouldn't even be introducing this formula. I feel like it could just make things a little bit more confusing. I like to just stick to basic tools. Even if it takes a little bit longer, decomposition may take a little bit longer, but you don't have to file all this extra stuff in your mind. But again, your teacher may require you to do it this way. So in case they do, this is how you do it. Uh, but if they don't, then you can actually just ignore this part of the video and you can just work these perfect square trinomials with decomposition. Okay, so that's if we use that formula here. Now, what if we were to use the other formula because notice here we're gonna be using, our, uh, we're dealing with a negative. What if we were to use this other formula here on this one? So. The other formula is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So what if we take this and we write it, rewrite it in this format? So again, the first thing I deal with is the ends. I try to take these two ends and write it as something in brackets squared. 
and then here something in bracket squared. So the 4x squared, we can rewrite that as 2x squared. The middle term I'm going to leave for now, and then the 9 we can rewrite as 30 squared like that. Right, one more time, we took the 4x squared, we rewrote as 2x squared, so it's in this format of a something in bracket squared. Then over here we took the 9, we rewrote it as 3 squared, right, b squared. And so from here we could tell that the a value is what? It is 2x in this case, here the b value is 3. And so taking that a and that b value for that middle term, we'll have minus 2 times the a value, which is 2x, times the b value, which is 3. And notice that indeed when we multiply these negative 2 times 2x is negative 4x times 3, we end up with negative 12x. So the fact that we were able to take this and rewrite it in this format, we pretty much verify that it's a perfect square trinomial. That's how you verify it, again, if you're using this formula. And because it's in that format, we know that this formula here, it's going to factor into a minus b squared. So basically, this is going to be the a value, which is 2x, minus the b value, which is 3 squared, which notice it's the same result that we got when we did it with decomposition. Okay, so over the next couple of videos, what we'll be doing is factoring perfect square trinomials. And I'll be doing it both ways uh, in case your teacher wants you to do it this way as well. So we'll be doing both decomposition and verifying it with that formula.